around to get into this here. What about you, Rabbit? Who do you have winning this particular series? I think it's it's hard to go with anyone other than uh, Love CX. There's a reason he's the number one seed. And if you look at the uh, the decks that he brought to, he's not bringing Shaman. He's not bringing anything like super crazy. Uh, they're all just like very good, consistent decks. And especially the one he's starting out with uh, here is uh, you know, the new and improved. Oil Rogue, so uh, it'll be interesting to see how he wants to play this one because uh, I mean, he's playing it up against a Control Priest, but sometimes it's kind of hard to stop con uh, Oil Rogue from doing Oil Rogue things if he gets a minion on the board and then he can just play everything out of his hand and that's a lot of burst to deal with. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, theoretically, Priest should have a lot of uh, a lot of options against uh, this kind of deck, uh, whether it's you know doing things like entombing huge minions off the field or uh, just playing out a lot of time and healing and clearing the board consistently. Um, it's uh, it's going to be interesting, but uh, I definitely think if there's any, uh, if, if there are any players who would make this an extremely exciting match to watch, it's going to be these two. Absolutely. And uh, as far as this particular matchup is concerned, um, between the Oil Rogue and the and the Priest. Um, back in the days when Miracle Road actually actually existed, there was a very very favorite matchup for Oil Rogue. Uh, excuse me, for the Rogue at the time it was Miracle, but uh, at that time it was you know roughly 70-30 in favor of Miracle Rogue. It was that you know favor for them. It was a really good matchup for them. And uh, but the last time that <laughs> that was the case was back when I was playing in BlizzCon. So that's a long time ago. But um, I mean, basically what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, a control priest has slowly but surely kind of caught up in this matchup. It's still, I would say, a bit favored for the rogue, but it's almost gotten even. And we'll see what uh, the the new uh, options for each player will how that'll help them out here. Uh, the obviously the expansion from LOE being out for a m about a month now, and uh, in particular that tomb pillager, like you mentioned, are going to be very helpful uh, for even ex even more, you know, of uh, that tempo for you know love here. But on these on the side of uh, on the side of Shing Tzu, he's obviously, I mean, uh, Death Lord is not a new card, but the with all the answers that are in Priest right now, they're uh, able to play that card much more easily. So definitely interesting to see how this will play out here. In any case, uh, Your Own Miracles love actually utilizing uh, an Eviscerate there just to get some more damage off onto this uh, Death Lord, and basically he's setting up for next turn because he knows he wants to use, he knows he wants to put a minion onto the field, be it the Tomb Pillager or the uh, Piloted Shredder, so he kind of puts the damage in already, so even if there's a heal onto this Death Lord, then uh, he would be able to kill it, so that's what he's going for. And uh, Shinsu has the option between Toshli, a huge tome, and Stalag. I imagine you go for Toshli, even though it could be a bit slow, uh, particularly because you get the spare part in your hand to help you out later. Uh, this huge toe just basically gets cleared by Blade Flurry, so it's not the great and uh, Stalag is just he's just too weak for his um, <coughs> his stat line there so yeah just gonna be Toshi there pretty strong minion honestly he's pretty annoying to deal with and you know if you sap it out of the way you usually you have to have a way to uh, deal with it in the future regardless or else you have a way to just win the game outright yeah. And, well, uh, I mean, for Toshli, you play it and you get the reversing switch that you can use on your Death Lord, and you're like, wait a second, that's eight damage. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the play there. But uh, it's still, like you said, yeah, it's a good it's a good card. Not just because it's not only itself, but it's also two spare parts too. So kind of the the Doctor Boom in that sense, because you're not just getting a card; you're getting a lot more. Right, and he's uh, honestly he's almost good enough to. I mean, he's he's pretty good, and he's like almost good enough to be kind of a standard in a lot of decks, and he's actually good enough to be even included in some decks just outright. So definitely good there. But uh, we have <clears throat> obviously the heal bot coming out of that death lord. Not the best minion you can get there. In fact, probably one of the worst, honestly, other than the Celsi deckhand, um, because of the fact that, I mean. A lot of your other three threes, like your your um, SI seven agent, like your far seers, they have a bit of an uh, impact, but not quite the impact of you know healing for eight. And even against a priest, that could be uh, pretty valuable here. Yeah, definitely. And uh, actually, I was uh, thinking wow. that she th should have draw a card last turn. Now she he has to use this method which uh, really feels bad for him to do right. through the cards and he commit to uh, Nostra Cleric which will mean that he won't be able he won't be able to have stable <clears throat> cargo in the future 
Right. I mean, I think what he was trying to go for is that the fact that, you know, the Museum Courier is a bit of a loss in tempo because you do it's a one true for two. And he wanted to make sure he knew what his options were going forward with that death rattle. Sometimes you don't you don't want to be a des desperation situation playing that card out. And so he did that. He also knew that um uh, Love was going to attack in with his dagger into that 2-1 regardless of whether he heals or not. So that was his, kind of his thought process, kind of uh, making it awkward there. But uh, as it stands, you know, pretty big board here for for uh, Love's DX. And, you know, the Holy Nova could have been a bit of an option, but wasn't going to clear everything. So it looks like uh, Shing Tzu is going to go for just developing his own board. And, you know, in a back-and-forth game like this, eventually Rogue's going to, you know, have a huge tempo turn, and he's going to be able to fill up his hand again with that uh, oh. sprint. So at this juncture in the game, I think I favor Love on his Oil Rogue. Definitely. Uh, a lot of card draw available. Uh, he's got Prep Sprint, which is, you know... I, I remember when no Rogue ever played Sprint, because they all got their draw from doing, like, you know, Miracle things. And then, you know, Miracle Rogue was really nerfed, and so now Rogues have to find a way to get card draw again. And then everybody is like, wait a second, you can just prep Sprint. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so good. And it is so good, and that's a great combo to use here. Of course, preparation also usable offensively, so it's just it's just so good. It's it's like a, a somewhat more limited, uh, you know, innervate. It's just like, hey, how about, how'd, you, how'd you like a ton of free mana and a free combo effect if you need it? It's pretty good. And uh, definitely a great spot for uh, Love CX to be in. He's got a huge board out there. And granted, yes, it all dies to this light bomb, uh, which, to be fair, should be what we see here coming out next turn. Right. I remember when Prep actually only reduced the cost by two. And, right. uh, but that was changed uh, pretty quickly there. But uh, yeah, like you said, entire board cleared by Light Bomb. Going to be going back to Love, though, so he has a chance to refill his board. Looks like he's going to go ahead and do that with a Vital Teacher coin and uh, this Shredder. So, you know, Light Bomb on one turn, and immediately your opponent has an entire board remaining, um, or entire board still there. <clears throat> Let's see what uh, Shing Tzu can get done here. Has the Entomb for something like this Vile Teacher, and yeah, he's actually going to go for it, pretty interesting enough, and they set him up for the next turn where he can uh, shrink my Circa Ball, that, um, that uh, Shredder, and the reason why he went for, you know, the Entomb on the Vile Teacher, and not, didn't want to take that with the, uh, the shrink my Circa Ball, was because obviously you're going to, you know, be face, facing a flood of 1-1s one -ones if that happens, but, um, I do like this play, by the way, by, um, by Love, not going for the Prep Sprint, but just going for the Sprint Naked, because, this prep is really, really valuable with other minions, or with other, sorry, not other minions, not other um, spells in the deck, as we see the play that uh, Shing Tzu was planning from the turn before. But, uh, you know, sometimes pe players make the mistake of you always prep with sprint, right? But uh, if you have no if you don't know what you're going to be drawing into, uh, for instance, Love would have had nothing to do there. He would have just basically floated some mana in that instance. But now, he has prep to use for future turns if he draws into something like, you know, Fan to use with spell damage, or even, you know, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, which is the common one. All right, well, I think the, the yeah the, the play to go for right here is definitely just to go ahead, prep sprint, get all the cards that you need. Uh, you already know that you've, you're starting to get into those win conditions, uh, which would be, you know, A, having a big <clears throat> weapon, B, having some way to use that weapon, and C, the, uh, the Tinker Sharp Sword Oil. Now, oddly enough, we see every single one of those options with the exception of the wow. Tinker Sharp Sword Oil. Look uh, at, but still sorry, sorry to cut you off. Look at this turn right here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, now, now that's what I call some good stuff. A plus, good stuff right there. Yeah, able to. It uh, reminds me of the copy pasta with tons of like thumbs up and one hundreds in it. Seems good. <laughs> Seems good. Yeah, I mean prep sprint. So he basically nourishes for four mana. And then he plays his Blood Mage Thanos. He plays two back steps. So for five mana, he gets a card on the board that that uh, cycles itself, and then he cycles another card, and he clears his entire opponent's board. Right. So basically, uh, for clearing the board, Love used, I think it's negative one card there, overall. <laughs> he used negative one card to clear the board there, I think is the overall math at the end there. Because he used two back stabs, yeah. which he got back. To be fair, in the in the grand scheme, he did just <laughs> massively thin out his deck. So he's going to hit fatigue like first, no matter what. But, yeah, uh, but if you can kill your opponents. <laughs> yeah, true. I was going to say, like you don't have to worry about that if you just kill your uh, kill your opponent. So, um, the one thing yeah, to, to be fair, Priest played one card and killed the entire board with Light Bomb. So That's true. We, 
both is... both classes have some pretty cool stuff that they can do. Oh. Um, the one thing for here for uh, Love, though, is he really wants to draw the Tinkers. Like, he's just thinking, like, both Tinkers yeah. at the bottom of my deck? Come on now. I could be winning <laughs> this game right well, now if I wanted to. Actually, I, th I, think, I think that was Liso had his staff and play all the damage he had. Uh, so let's see. He would have had an extra two from that Celsi deckhand, would have had seven from the uh, Blade Flurry, and then another uh, five from the uh, Eviscerate. I don't think so. Um, I think it was a bit short there, unfortunately. Because uh, he didn't have any Tinkers, which nothing to really buff his minions on the board. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, the Shredder does come down and uh, gets a card that's able to be dealt with with Holy Nova. So that's going to be the play. And uh, Death Lord coming right back on the board. Can get sapped again. We'll see what... Um, what uh, love goes with the problem with sapping this a second time, however, is that if you do so, then uh, Shing Tzu could just play it on the board, and then Valen's chosen it, which is obviously a, a you know kind of a big deal. So uh, prep comes in the hand of love, but still no Singer Sharp at all. I think we're getting to the bottom five or six cards in this deck, and we're still not seeing that uh, yeah. uh, either Tinker, which is definitely important. Um, <laughs> He if it's good enough to name your deck after, you you probably kind of want to see it. It's like it's like Raptor Rogue. Like if you're gonna name your deck after that card, you should probably be able to play that card, uh, which is not happening with this version of Rogue either. Yeah, definitely. But um, like I said, it's really tough for for Love CX here because he, like I mean, he probably thinks that there could be a, a Valence chosen in the hand of Shing Tzu, and the instant you sap, that's what's going to happen. He's going to play it back. He's going to Valence chosen it. Now you have to deal with a four sixteen, which uh, you know you usually don't want to deal with. So there comes the sap, and that honestly could be the beginning of the end for Love CX. He looked like he's in a really good spot. I mean, he still is in kind of okay spot. Maybe you know there could be still a big blade flurry right here. Um, but uh, we'll see how he deals with this, uh, this, you know, probably Tinker Sharp, or it's probably the Valence Chosen uh, Death Lord, though there could be a different option here. One thing that yeah, he that could Death do... Yeah, Death Lord is going to get so much value, but... Uh... I mean, there could be a different choice here, maybe he's a bit afraid of, because there could be a huge Blade Flurry, right? I mean, uh, one, six attack blade flurry or one six attack dagger can just take care of that by itself then you blade flurry the whole thing and you hit face for a lot with your remaining minions if you just go ahead and do that so I, maybe he might go for a valence chosen on his toshley and then holy nova to clear out the uh si7 agent from there hmm. um, yeah but the problem with that is that if you if the uh first charge of a dagger not going on a um that though it will go, it will go on your face, which is probably not what you want to see to begin with. Yeah, that's true. So it's definitely. I mean, it's good to have the Death Lord out there, but now it's just so much more, uh, more mortal than it used to be. <clears throat> yeah. So I guess. Uh, so what? Uh, what are some options here? You can. Uh, you uh... could just go for um, the South Sea plus Tinkers. And then uh, Deadly Poison, hit the guy, and then Flurry. I don't think you use prep here because you don't really need it. You can use prep for a different time when you don't have the ability to use um, the uh, uh, either a Deadly or a South Sea Deckhand. But, um... Oh. Hmm. Interesting. He's going to go for a normal Blade Flurry and just save his second Blade Flurry uh, for like a Super Tinker's turn later. And can actually eviscerate that as well. And just hope that his opponent doesn't have a way to deal with whatever comes out here. I think he knows what's there. So it is actually a Lotha. Oh, which is, ugh. It's somewhat unfortunate that he doesn't get the battle cry, But at the same time, if there's no death in hand, there's no way to deal with it from Shinx. And we do see there's no death in hand. There oh, is. Yeah. There, there, there are two emergency cooldowns, though. Which is really nice for him to get in this situation. Yeah, which which will actually will uh, give his possibility that T Tinker Shots all you actually go on to the Lotha if they couldn't attack. But Vile Teacher in oh that's uh Vile Teacher that uh I think it's Vile Teacher that he just in tune, otherwise you'll be very very weird. So there's one card left in uh Love's hand apparently, and getting that sludge belter is absolutely huge in this situation. I believe there might have been lethal if it went on to the South Sea Deckhand, speaking of um, the uh, oil with, if, well, without that uh, belcher on the board, but as it stands, it's a bit awkward here, honestly. 
And I'm going to be playing everything out here. <clears throat> I'm going to go for double tinkers and hit the belcher and flurry. And uh, going to be, let's see, going to be 15 damage to the face here. So yeah, without that belcher, that would have been lethal right there. It's like actually a good thing that both tinkers actually hit the, the deck hand though. But uh, I believe that Shing Tzu wins the game. No, he doesn't quite. Yeah. Well, he needs to take care of the uh, Lothop eventually. But uh, he can continue. Cool. Teacher and uh, Nova and uh, oh, yeah. Pal again. yeah, and then he can kill the Lothop later, right? So this this game is pretty much over, uh, or definitely over. There's no way for Love to win the game. So I would say pretty fortunate there by Shing Tzu getting the double, the double freeze and getting the. Uh, the Sludge Welter off of the Museum Curator, but in the end, he's able to ride that pretty solid decision-making by him overall, and let's not take too much credit away from him in that regard, but 1-0 is the score in favor of Shing Tzu. Basically, kind of our, the least known player in this group is uh, two games away from being first out of here. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, very huge for him as well, because uh, Prince is probably uh, the weakest link for Shing Tzu there in this matchup, because uh, you're going up against a uh, patron that uh, you don't necessarily have the 100% chance to win, and you are going to face again uh, a two, which you can lose sometimes. And uh, you, you actually, and you are, you are, you have won the favorable matchup of all three possible. So definitely uh, very good for Shin Su there. Yeah, so good to, for him to get his priest out of the way, like you say. We'll see how he does with the rest of his classes here. Um, he has Shaman and Druid remaining, I believe, as we go back into this. So yeah, going to be Shaman coming up first. Gets the Miracle in hand right away, as well as the Totem Golem. So that's pretty nice for him. Um, and obviously going to be the Patron Warrior here for love. Patron Warrior can deal with uh, Shaman, but it's not as great as a matchup as you would, might think it would be. Um... Once you start getting the damage in from the shaman, it's really hard to you know come back from that deficit if you are the warrior. All right. Well, uh, after seeing uh, who was it? it was a tiddler that played this uh, this deck so much, and uh, you know he's actually out of the tournament. Hopefully, uh, we can see Shing Tzu maybe use it uh, to a little bit uh, greater effect. Uh, certainly versus the uh, control version uh, of Warrior, you might have a little bit of trouble struggling through the early game, but uh, towards uh, uh, versus the uh, Patron Warrior, like you said, I, th I think we've seen this matchup probably more than any other matchup, just one-on-one, uh, -on -one. so it's going to be uh, exciting to see if maybe this time around, I, I, I forget what the record is uh, between these uh, two classes, because we've seen this like... I don't like, think we've seen it, actually. This particular matchup, I think maybe you're getting more like Paladin mixed up with so many things. No, no, not not uh, not uh, today, but uh, I think over yesterday's series, I think we saw this matchup uh, at least twice. I'm trying to think. Although uh, I'm probably trying to include games that included Murloc Paladin too. Um, all I know is that uh, it's kind of interesting I... as far as the way Burst goes here, because for for the. Uh, Shaman, that's kind of you know all you're looking for early on, but for it's a little bit more of like a ramp up deck for the the patron warrior. Yeah, I think what we saw was a lot of patron and a lot of shaman, but not a lot of patron versus shaman. No, we we didn't see any of this matchup yesterday right. as I uh, just chat. Yeah, so I think I think that's what it was. We saw like it, I think in your mind there's there are a lot of patrons and a lot of shamans, and you're like there must have been a patron versus shaman, right? But then if you think of it, like wait a second, <laughs> because uh. Uh, anyway, anyway, but we're seeing exactly what I was talking about earlier, is that uh, this Patron's getting behind, and usually you don't actually see Shield Block in hand, or Shield Block in the deck for um, Patron. This is probably some reason why he's running it for this particular matchup, but even right. with that, it's kind of an uphill battle. Alright, well, uh, it's definitely going to be a good card here. Uh, you know, Obviously, getting more defenses, more card draw, all things that he wants to go for. And of course, he's got Lotheb coming up here in just uh, you know another turn, so that's definitely going to be good. The question is, like, do you really hit into the uh, to the Wolf Rider with your, uh, your uh, yeah, you Fiery War Axe? Like, oh, Darnassus Aspirin is pretty painful here. I mean, yeah. I, I can't really see Shing Tzu killing that himself, but that Darnassus might have to trade in something else later, which obviously you don't really want to do. Um, 
But in the meantime, there's going to be more charging the face, more hero powering the face, and there's going to be need to be an armor smith coming out here soon for uh, love to be able to to you know basically come come back here in this game. Um, in the meantime, I mean he can put out you know his Lothab. One thing you really want to do, however, with Lothab is play it right before you since you have the win and your opponent doesn't. Um, and in this case, we're not really close to that situation. However, uh, if we have maybe a race here, Love can, you know, play out the Dr. Boom next turn, but that, you know, makes him makes it so that he doesn't use a hero power. It's just kind of uh, tough here for Love to, you know, you know, balance using his hero power and uh, getting threats on the board so that he can actually race. Well, like you said, yes, racing that's... is... Uh... If you're, when you're when you're racing against a an aggro shaman, it sort of feels like you know they're riding the motorcycle and you're riding the bicycle, <laughs> and, and you're just like, man, I, I got to pedal really fast to keep up with this guy. Uh, but the, I mean, the upside, of course, is that Patron Warrior includes much much more card draw and has some armor options. Whereas for aggro shaman, it's a uh, a little bit a uh, little bit lower on the card draw, although it does have the ancestral knowledge. Uh, but like you said, saw there ten percent chance of just straight up winning the game with a draw on Doomhammer. Yep, so an even 20 cards left in the deck, I can do that math. And so, uh, there is a chance, however, of you know drawing Ancestral Knowledge, and from there you can uh, draw into that Doomhammer as well. So that, there's that possibility. And he also has the, Earth, uh, the, excuse me, the Lava Shock to go after that as well. Um, so that could be something that helps him out. Um, obviously, yeah, even, uh, actually, even, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, Earth Shock into, or, excuse me, the intentional knowledge into the Doom Hammer would be able to use with the Rock Biter as well. So that's something to think about going forward. So uh, another defensive turn here from Love realizes he needs to stay alive as long as possible. Crackle comes in hand, which is not going to be too useful. Um, Maybe so, you just play the Crackle this turn anyway. But you uh... you do lose a hero power, unfortunately, in that case. Um, the only thing you can really do is play the Rock Biter, but the Rock Biter costs one anyway, so you're not likely to be in a turn where you can't use it unless you draw a Doom Hammer next turn. Right. In which case, you want to have it anyway. Uh, so this is kind of awkward. I don't think you can really play it because the most expensive thing that you get is uh, going to be the Doom Hammer. But uh, maybe he maybe he thinks he'll draw into you know ancestral knowledge and then you know lava burst something else, and then he won't have the one mana. Well. The problem is he will be on nine mana next turn. That uh, if you want to play, he draws the Doom Hammer and want to play all the cards he have. He has to do this. So, right. Well, in any case, it's going to be just more defensive playing uh, here from Love. Um, just going to be hero powering up and using you know just getting those guys in the field and not going to be enough damage here. Uh, I don't believe, wait, 6, 7, 8, 9, no, okay, if he rolls for 6 on the Crackle, if he, there's a 1 in 4 chance here for uh, Shing Tzu to, to get lethal here, um, otherwise 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, he's dead to the Grom on the other side, so actually, this is just game here, uh, Shing Tzu cannot uh, Crackle one of these minions, um, well, I guess he could Crackle the Lotha, but if you're going to Crackle for 5 on the Lotha, you might as well Crackle face. So we're just going to go for it here. Are we going to get the 1 in 4 chance of getting lethal? Nope, going to be one short. And Love is going to win the game off of his Grom coming up here. And you see him kind of breathe a sigh of relief right now. As he is going to take wow. game number 2 and tie up the series. It's a, a lot more of a close series than we've seen in the past. Uh, traditionally, it's been you know, one player coming off to an early lead, and then you know the other player either struggling to come back from that. But I don't think we've actually seen any comebacks uh, tonight. So the player that usually gets ahead stays ahead. This might be an opportunity to come th to turn things around by evening up the series. Right, and we have some interesting decks remaining as well with uh, Druid and Shaman, obviously, for Shing Tzu. And uh, for Love, <clears throat> we have the Rogue and the Warlock, which we saw before was a Zulok. So, um, these are, this is kind of an interesting uh, situation here. We don't typically see these kind of, uh, these matchups left over. Um, but just looking at it, uh, the Zoo does decently well against both of the uh, decks from or both the Druid and the Shaman. Not quite as well against the Shaman as it does against Druid. And as for the Rogue, it's you know slightly an underdog against the Druid, but against the Shaman, it uh, is 
I think, slightly favored in that regard because it's able to get rid of early minions. But it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out as we get into our next game. It's going to be the Shaman against the... the um, Zoo, excuse me. Couldn't get it in my head there. And uh, this basically hinges on whether a Shaman can get a pretty fast start here. Um, if there's a lot of board pressure coming from the Zoo, then they can just finish out the game before a Shaman can really get his burst going. But if Shaman can contend for the board early, then they have way more burst than the Zoo does. All right, well, we're going to start things all over again with the Tunnel Trog. It turns out Tunnel Trogs are basically the best way to start. Uh, coin into Lightning Bolt, I mean, that's it sounds pretty good because you're getting a lot of damage done early. <laughs> to, but, to, to the phase, yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit Dennis there. So now you actually have the opportunity to use the Lightning Bolt. You get some real advantage by killing off that Knife Juggler. All right, he could go for that. He could actually go for the Crackle just for uh, mana efficiency because he can use the right. the, uh, the Lightning Bolt later for a bit cheaper. Yeah. Coin uh, Horse Rider is also pretty good here, too. Yeah, that was the other thing I was going to say as well. And it's really difficult to deal with one health. You don't see Mortal Coil at all in uh, Zoo these days unless it comes off a Dark Peddler. And we can see in, um, in uh, Love CX's hand that he doesn't have a way to deal with it either other than play an in-game boss and kind of contend for the board. So... Um, I do like the uh, Archon Horse Fighter. It just feels like it would be a pretty good option. He does go for it. Yeah, it's it's good because like unlike clearing that with a spell, you actually get to keep something on the board, so you're developing the board early on, which should be your goal anyway. So uh, it does definitely feel good. And because you're coming up on turn three, no matter what your opponent plays, you'll probably be able to kill it off with a Lava Burst uh, or a Zap. If, uh, if worse comes to worse. So now, uh, you have the opportunity to do something like, um, I guess, you can Totem Golem and then use the Lightning Bolt, but that doesn't kill it exactly. You can uh, you can Totem and just and hope for a Spell Power and then use the Lightning Bolt. That's, uh, I guess, one way to deal with it. Yeah, I don't think we I see a world in which he Totems. Um, it's either going to be Totem Golem or Crackle, I believe. Right. But, um, yeah, it looks like it's this is just the full Smork play. This will punish him a bit because... What Love can do now <clears throat> is attack into this Argent Horse Rider, make a 1-1 one, one Imp, and then taunt both of them up with the Defender of Argus, which I think is what he has to do here. But no, he's going to go for a very um, kind of risky play here with this Dark Peddler. I'm not sure what he's intending to get here. No matter what he does, he either plays the... Uh, I guess he, he's you know committed to playing the Dire Elf Alpha to definitely get rid of right. this, this Tunnel Truck, but going to be taking at least 5 damage to the face here. Well... Either fire damage to the face or his direwolf alpha gets cleared off pretty easily, but um, you know either way, it's just uh, not good news here for love. Nope, love. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you'd think you look at the board, you're like, hey, wow, that's a pretty good board to have for a zoo, but uh, <clears throat> not uh, not when you think about how much damage is going to come his way in the next like two three turns. Exactly. Um, one thing he could do, though, speaking of love, is uh, he might have a plan as far as you know utilizing the um, Defender of Argus as well. Okay, look, looks like we see a crack of the face. Hits for three, unfortunately, uh, for Shing Tzu here. But, I mean, looking from love's perspective, um, I would like to see him just go for the Defender of Argus plus the uh, Voidwalker. And then next turn you get the Lothab, and you you almost can't die if you play Lothab next turn unless your opponent's been you know setting you up for lethal with just burn from the face or for burn from the hand from there, and then after that you can play the Doom Guard and finish out the game. So we actually have a path to victory here for love, but I don't think you really need you really can afford to be trading right now. Uh, yeah, the uh, at least for the zoo player what do you feel is like the uh, the the win mechanic here do you keep trading out and trying to get a board presence cuz I, mean, I feel like he's you're just going to die to direct damage pretty soon so i mean, i don't think zoo can, includes a lot of healing in the <clears throat> deck to to be able to prevent that from happening so definitely putting love cx on a clock yeah and I, honestly i I think the plan that I just like laid out here is definitely will, would work out for him. Just go for the Defender of Argus uh, here. That means there's not going to be any sort of chargers coming up in, um, anytime soon uh, to be able to kill you as well. And you also have this Voidwalker instead. So it's basically going to be all direct damage. And then since it's all direct damage, the next turn you go for the Lothib. And then after that, you go for the Doom Guard um, and just finish out the game that way. And I believe that would be enough damage over the long run. So that is definitely a path of victory here for... For uh, you love or not, not you love, love, love CX. And if he goes for that, I think that he, 
I think he's actually has a really clear chance of winning. I think he actually might be ahead if he does go for that play. Yeah, I think that is definitely true. Actually, I, I was kind of, uh, um, I I I think that it was really interesting that Shinzo didn't go for card draw first because right. what you basically do is to draw into more direct damage and uh, play it in two one or two turns. So now he has he could. Right, I, I definitely agree with you. He didn't have enough damage in hand to be able to... I mean, obviously, you draw a card every single turn, so that could have what he, what he was thinking. But, uh, you know, without the damage to be able to kill his opponent, um, I don't... I, I definitely agree with you that he probably should have gone for card draw, but we'll see how much damage this is. I mean, currently, how much damage is there on the board? It's uh, 10 damage on the board, plays out the low that it's and uh, on 3 mana, that means that they're... I mean, Chingsu can't do anything. And now there's 15, and now that's just going to be game for love. Yeah. I, I think for love, he was expecting to have another turn to be able to play cards, but it turns out Lotha is pretty good at preventing that. For Shinsu, you mean? Yeah, for, for Shinsu. Um, now he uh, he does not have another wow. turn. He is going to die, <laughs> and uh, wow, I, I guess that's just it. Zoo, you know, if it, Zoo used to be the deck that Aggro Shaman is now, that one deck that is so good at being aggressive that it really, like, it, it it doesn't really play the game of Hearthstone because it's kind of like, you know, when Face Hunter came out, it's like it plays a different game than most players are, are, are trying to play. Like, for, for Zoo, it's just like you spam a bunch of cheap uh, minions. For, you know, Hunter, it's just like you only go face. For Shaman, it's like you play aggressively early on and then you just burst them down with burn damage straight to the face with Overload. And it's uh, it can be really difficult to deal with that. So it's nice to see, you know, the old guard of Zoo decks coming back and picking up a win against sort of the you know the new hotness that is uh aggro shaman <laughs> the well new... i mean shaman is the new that's... hotness read uh rapid melt in 2016 now go ahead shrink <laughs> yeah i was going to say that uh, the face on is really good against uh the uh, uh zoo deck is uh, one of the reasons is that you have uh explosive trap which deals most uh this meaning, and uh, I guess that's why you just learn from Nightwalk and you play Lightning Storm in your deck. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, Nightwalk knew it all along. Too bad he's uh, he's in one of the harder groups of the uh, the tournament. Well, you do actually see occasionally Lightning Storm and even Elemental Destruction in Shaman just to, for those occasions, right? Just to elongate the game, realizing that you have more burst in the long run, so... Um, that is something that is actually played, but we are going to get into this game four here. Uh, you love CX from Yolo Miracle is one game away, as we see him sap out this uh, totem golem here. But uh, he is one game away from being able to advance the rounds of sixteen. And kind of funny, you know, seeing someone sap uh, a two drop, but it really helps here, to be honest, because that that totem golem costs three mana, and it's three mana over two turns, which really messes with Shing Su's turn two here. Right. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was gonna say it's almost more awkward because you know it's it's one it's three mana spread out over turns where it just really makes that curve extremely awkward to deal with. Yeah, yeah and uh, I was actually going to say that uh, you actually see a lot of uh, rogue stabbing uh, dark uh, mad scientists uh, when uh, they are playing against the uh, face hunter because. Uh, uh, my slide is probably one of the things you can zap in that matchup. But yeah, Shredder coming up, actually, it's interesting to see level 6 not killing one of the wolves there. Right, uh, he feels like he probably needs the uh, backstab to deal with the Totem Golem coming up here. Um, and potentially if he draws into uh, a prep here, that would be absolutely amazing. And he does pick up the prep, wow, so... Wow, okay. Um, this entire That's board, pretty cool. This entire board can be gone. It depends on how he goes about it. Um, I imagine you just go for Azure Drake and then for the uh, the backstab onto the Totem Golem and then prep Fan, and then uh, from there you just use your face and then unfortunately you have to run your four three into a two one. But the board's cleared, which is a big deal. Uh, he's gonna go for a different play here. Which kind of surprises me. I feel like you can't really be taking 3 damage. <laughs> I, I think you want to be mitigating as much damage as possible, but that's just me. 
Perhaps he's saving the prep for a huge uh, damage turn, utilizing that with uh, Tinker Sharp's Oil. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean... I was just going to say, it wouldn't... The, the 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 big burst combo that Oral Rogue is very well known for, you hit the face with a big weapon, and then you blade flurry everything, and then you use the uh, the minion that's buffed by Sharp Sword Oil to, to hit too. Like, that's the big burst combo. But it actually takes a, a little bit to pull off here, and so... I I don't know if if that it's definitely coming down next turn more more likely than not. But he doesn't have the blade flurry to make it work. So it's like, uh, is that really going to be good enough? Right. Well, I mean, there is the consideration that if he just does that uh, next turn and you know he just throws down all of his minions, just goes all face, even if he doesn't kill his opponent, it might force things to start trading, which is, I mean. You're knowing you're in a good spot if your your opponents if your aggro shaman opponent starts you know trading with you so that might be what he's thinking about. That said, I mean there's five damage on the board so I mean I feel like Love C is gonna be ha gonna have to be the one to blink first. Lothab is drawn though so maybe we might see a repeat of last game here. Um, I mean he could just go eight to the face, play the Lothab out, and uh, go for that. But looks like he's playing the fan this turn, going for a bit of a different play here, and. I mean, the Telsey Daikan could be used here. He, um, yeah, I imagine he's going to go for that. He can just re-dagger as well. Um, I imagine, well, I guess he could take one damage on his face right now. Um, or two damage, excuse me, on his face right now. And then that will set him up better for killing his opponent next turn, or two turns from now, if he gets the four damage in. But uh, everything is kind of uh, awkward here. Yeah, but uh, interesting that he decides to go for the uh, Telsey Daikan uh, first rather than uh, and uh, hesitating uh, over whether killing that uh, Arjun Horse Rider because, I mean, he might change his mind to kill the Arjun Horse Rider and uh, there might be an armor smith coming out from that uh, uh, Shredder as well. Hmm. Yeah, it, all, it kind of depends on what comes out of the Shredder. There's so many wacky things that can happen there. It just feels extremely... Yeah, I used to be like pretty decently able to predict. All right, here, here are the good things. Here are the bad things. Like, know your options. But now I think there's, I forget how many two drop minions there are that come out of shredders nowadays. Do you remember D two? Seventy something, eighty or something. I don't know. Uh, it's a lot. I I stopped counting after they started, you know, bringing up more expansions. But um, it's it's over seventy. It was like sixty nine or something after the first after GBG. So, uh, 70 something or 80 something. Um, it doesn't really uh, help to do the math here. But it looks like uh, Shing Tzu is going to be the one to blink for a oh. but Hits for six now, which is what he uh, wanted to have last <laughs> wow. game. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say, if that had happened last <clears throat> game, we might be seeing a different uh, situation now. But that is a lot of burst damage to deal with. And all of a sudden, Rogue Player is on 11 health. Yeah, definitely. The thing is, though, is that uh, there is a Lothab, which is a big deal here. Um,. If okay, so let's see. Uh, Shing Tzu is on is going to be on six mana next turn if you include the overload. So that means he can only use a lightning bolt, right? Uh, unless he has a bunch of charges, which is typically not the case. Typically, you don't see things like arcing golem. So what if love? Okay, he's gonna sprint. <laughs> Thanks for making everything I was about to say move. <laughs> but um, what if he just went for Lothab and hit face, and then he could have drawn blade Flare and won the game uh, because he can't lose the game even if he leaves at least all five damage on the board. But it uh, looks like he's going to blink first and just trade everything in. And going to get a Bloodfen Raptor for his troubles. But uh, yeah, this game is pretty back and forth. Um, what do we have here? How much damage? We have, it uh, looks like, 10 damage on the side of Shing Tzu, but not enough man to use it all. Um, I think a... Oh, well, Doomhammer wouldn't be lethal either. So, I mean, this is anyone's game, honestly. And especially with that heal bot in hand, as well as the Lotha, this is kind of crazy. Actually, oh. so this could be lethal right here. Wow. Um, uh... Actually, it's guaranteed lethal. What am I saying? Yeah, yeah. I was just saying, like, I'm, I'm, I was thinking of a way that it couldn't be lethal. I was like, wait a second. Uh, maybe he misplays, but I, uh, I don't think so. Yeah, no, no, not going to be any earth shocks on uh, heal bots this, this turn. <laughs> but, uh, that is it's going to silence be... the heal bot so it doesn't heal. Duh. <laughs> that would be the most insane thing if that was that was what Hitler, or Tiddler was thinking about. But that's going to be a tie series, two games to two. And wow. this is going down to the wire. The winner of this next game will be in the round of 16, and the loser still in jeopardy of being eliminated from the tournament. 
uh, against a very good player in Fuolver in the Decider match. So, yep, it's going to be Druid versus Rogue, a very classic matchup. One that we've seen since like the beginning of time, it seems like. I mean, it's, I mean, Druid and Rogue were the two strongest decks in the summer of 2014. If that, uh, I mean, if that doesn't ring any nostalgia bells, but uh, yep, IG's Shinsu on the right there, Yellow Miracles, Love CX on the left, down to their final game potentially here. One of them is going for one of them is going to be their final game, but uh, we'll see how this pans out as we get into this game right here. Uh, this is the first series tonight that's gone all the way to five games, correct? Um, I believe so, yeah. Everything everything so far has been pretty one-sided. Uh, I think we had like a 3-1 for Shinxu over Tiddler, 3-0 for Love over Fualver, and then Fualver beat Tiddler 3-1, yeah, so. Right. So, uh, yeah, definitely going the distance this time around, trying to get uh, the most games of Hearthstone played possible. Uh, and I think this is our third of uh, five series tonight. So fourth of five. Fourth of five. That's right. Wow. It's, uh, it's time flies when you're casting Hearthstone. I guess. <laughs> right. Unlike yesterday, where we had a lot of long series. Uh, oh that... my gosh! Yeah, yesterday we went like an hour over scheduled time. It was it was uh, even more Hearthstone than tonight. So. I mean, the reason why we're casting on my channel today and not uh, HSCN is because yesterday went so long. We're like, wait a second, this is going to eat into uh, HDS time. But uh, yeah, that, by the way, that's going to be going on in an hour and 20 minutes. Maybe we'll finish with then, before then, maybe not. But uh, at least we have precautions. But as far as this game is concerned, going to be Coin Darnassus right off the bat here. And um, if this is... This is actually an interesting play here by Shing Tzu because... If there isn't a response, and we see Love just go for a dagger here, then we could see a coin uh, Harrison, and that's basically like, you know, going for an Ancient of Lore on turn 3 here, um, which would be pretty insane. Basically, it's 5-4, uh, draw 2 cards, and he does go for it. He goes for the hero power. We're going to see two cards drawn on this Harrison. It's going to be basically a 3-mana... I'm trying to do the analogy here. 3-mana Ancient of Lore, because you get it with the Innervate anyway, We'll just call it what, like it is. It's a 5-4, draw a card for 3 mana. That's pretty insane. Um, but, uh, yeah, the really, really crazy turn, really crazy uh, idea there by Shing Tzu, and it worked out perfectly. He said, okay, rogues almost every single time hero power on turn 2. If I coin this Tarnassus out, I might just get 2 cards out of this, and it worked out like a charm. Yes, that's definitely true. Actually, uh, I, what, what I was thinking, like... You know, is that uh, he actually could have played the Temple PGH because uh, you didn't see uh, the Dr. Boom uh, possibly from uh, Rogue all the time. And uh, I mean, uh, if you see some, something more than, than six uh, attack, you're pretty, pretty much dead already. So uh, it's well, his choice. Sometimes you see cards played onto the field and then they're Tinker Sharps with Oil before they're able to attack it. Um, but looks like Shing Tzu does agree with you, does realize that he might have made a mistake last turn by not going for it, and he does go for the BGH this turn, and a lot of pressure on the board right now. Um, <clears throat> no matter what uh, Love does right here, there can be, uh, you know, at least an Emperor played, and if not, you know, if the um, Darnassus isn't dealt with, then there could be Dr. Boom as well, but looks like Love is going out of his way to deal with as many things as possible here, and actually has a really good turn uh, using that backstab plus SI and the Blood Mage Sound, as, as efficient as you're going to get here. And uh, we have the 3-2 taunt, the warrior taunt, whose name is escaping right now, coming onto the field for Love CX. Hmm. Is something trainer or something? Sparring partner is what it is, that's right. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, so this is an interesting game because, I mean, Love has a lot of tempo tools, right? Uh, I mean, if you... If your opponent has a lot of big minions, you want a lot of saps, right, for the tempo here. But at the same time, I mean, you can't just sap forever. And he's not too close to be able to win this game um, if he does go for that. So it looks like he's going to go for some, you know, card draw here. Picks up a, a deadly poison for his trouble. And a lot of pressure coming in the way of Shing Tzu, but he does have a, a, a Dr. Boo. I mean, looking at the hands, this is actually kind of insane. Could Shing Tzu possibly lose this game with the hand he has right now? Uh, I... <laughs> that that would be almost more impressive than winning the game. Oh. I mean. Wow. So yeah, Tinker Sharp Total Oil is a lot of damage. He could actually just go for that right now. How much damage that would be? It would be um the dagger plus two of those guys would be uh 
10, and then 16. So 16 damage to the face is what, uh, you know, Love CX holds right now. He could just do that and ignore the Dr. Boom, but uh, would there be lethal on the backside? I, hold on. 9, and then, so the Dr. Boom would be 9, plus 3 is 12, and then uh, plus another 6. It would actually be lethal, I believe on the backside with the uh, Drew the Claw charge with Savage Roar, so this game is on pins and needles, honestly. Both players are like threatening to lethal their opponent at a moment's notice. Yeah, and this is what's so volatile about this matchup. It's like, you don't just win by like, just, just barely. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure that may, might happen, but more often than not, either the Druid gets a huge combo, or the uh, the Rogue is able to just, like, Blade Flurry for a billion damage. So it's uh, going to be coming down to it. Uh, 19 health is not within combo range. It depends on the Boom Bot hits, and oh my gosh, all right. Hey, that's basically the best situation uh, that Love CX could have hoped for. Right, uh, looks like he might be a bit behind uh, if you just saw the Boombot hit, but um, in any case, Savage are actually being used here to clear off this board, uh, at least part of it, and the Boombot misses one more time. Uh, maybe you're actually a bit ahead of me, I don't know, either one, but, uh, uh, right, but in any case... Oh, I was yeah. a bit behind, so now I am totally caught up and it's all good. All right, cool. But, uh, yeah, so Shing Tzu... He really wanted that to hit, and now he's a bit worried about dying here. But uh, he can play either healing or go for a taunt. Uh, he might be pressured. You feel like he's pressured into healing, considering that his you know, Doctor Boom got stabbed. And uh, is there lethal yeah, here? Actually, six, yeah, six, twelve. One damage off lethal, I think. Uh, well, uh, Tinker Sharp Sword Oil gives you. Uh, it depends because he's gonna have to like re dagger. And then Deadly Poison, and then Tinker's Sharp Sword Oil. His dagger goes to 6, and the Earthen Ring Farser goes to 6 as well. So I believe that's 1 damage off lethal. Um, it's just so awkward right now. But, uh, yeah, it looks like he's just going to go for it. Going to put as much pressure on his opponent as possible. And it looks like he probably used the Sap as well. Just because you can only... If you heal for 5, it doesn't really matter too much. Right, because then you won't be able to do anything else that turn. Yeah, and then you just die. Um, so it is going to be a sap. And is there any way for Shing Tzu to, to live right now? Taunt and uh, yeah, kill you ta uh, Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, Keeper of the Grove and Taunt. And you just saw a sap, so that's actually really big right here. Um, yeah, so we're going to put the Taunt up. And will Love pick up Lethal here? Could be Blade Flurry, could be Eviscerate, could be basically anything. Can't be a combo card, unfortunately. Picks up an Azure Drake. This is, oh, this is just what's it going to be? Oh, oh Eviscerate. There it is. That is so painful there for oh, wow. Shing Tzu. You see him shaking his head. And Love CX is going to be our first player out of the group of death. He makes it to the round of 16. And he's looks like he's about to pass out. Uh, so much pressure there.